Hello, and welcome to the Gilbo Girls Show, where you will have the opportunity to hear from mothers, fathers, siblings, and individuals themselves about their journey of living with a disability. I know, I know, it's called Gilbo Girls, but we have a bonus for you as we get the Gilbo boys to interview some of the dads and siblings and get their perspectives too. We'll also have special guests from time to time to share the many resources that are available to those living with a disability and their families. So get ready to laugh, smile, cry, maybe even get a little angry when you hear some of these stories of their day-to-day -day struggles. But let's not forget their many triumphs. As they say, it takes a village. And if it weren't for our village, we wouldn't be where we are today. So join us. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Gilbo Girls. Today, we have Teresa and Nick with you and Faith. And we actually met Nick and Teresa through one of the Facebook groups um, for people with cerebral palsy. So we wanted to have them on the show and ask them some questions and let them talk about a new cooking show that they're also going to be um, launching as well. So thank you guys for coming. I appreciate it. And so we want to know how you guys met because in your bio that you had sent, we were really excited about how you guys met and what your journey was. So if you want to tell us a little bit about that, we would love to hear. You want to go? Yeah, go? we met back in March of 2018 uh, on a Saturday morning at a several positive support group. Yep, part of Warm Springs here in San Antonio, Texas. They had a cerebral palsy support group and my friend had been after me for literally years to go to the support group. And I was like, no, I don't want to go. It's going to be a bunch of people singing Kumbaya and like be all fine with their disability. And I, I thought it was going to be cheesy and dumb. So uh -huh. I didn't want to <laughs> But I finally, I finally went and little did I know I was going to meet him. And she's like, I was telling her what I do was at the time I, I was working and running five radio stations on the internet. We do Christian music uh, where I do Christian rock, hip hop and worship. 24 seven. And the next night there was a Toby Mac concert in town and she's like, are you going to the concert? And I'm like, yeah, I kind of work the concerts. I actually shoot concert photography as a hobby. Oh, get out. That's awesome. And I mean, a, a typical concert for me, I'll shoot 3000 still shots and I'll video 40 to 50 videos but that's every song from front to back of the concert and then he shares them with the artists or other radio stations or other people in the crowd wow. that want pictures yeah I, I've, I've got over thirty thousand still shots from the last three years and since we've met we've done 41 concerts together i love we, it most of the time we work the concerts which means yeah, we, we volunteer do, we do food for the hungry um man the boost or we do merchandise i like doing merchandise because once in a while They'll give us a free T-shirt, and who doesn't like a free T-shirt? You know, exactly. and, and it, it, this this the next three months are just absolutely insane. In March, we have five concerts, three concerts in one week. Yeah, and that's traveling between San Antonio and Austin. We live in San Antonio. Okay, I think our, I think our Christian artists missed. Um, they missed uh, touring so much. They're they're touring. they're yeah. just piling it on. Yeah. So, yeah. You know. yeah, we met, um, he, he was at the Toby Mac concert and he came and found me at the Toby Mac concert and we chatted and then, um, then he invited me to his Bible, Bible we'll study. study and dinner at his church. Oh, but before that, I realized you had a really crappy hospital chair. Oh yeah. And I took I one did. of my, my old ultralight wheelchairs and put it back together and gave it to her. I thought that was awesome. I was reading that in your bio. I'm like, how cool is that? <laughs> yeah. I was like, forget the flowers. They die. I don't care. About that. That's what I tell everybody. He wasn't a flowers and chocolate guy. He literally built me a wheelchair that made it easier for me to get around. And my mom was teasing because while he was building the wheelchair, he had to get my measurements. And my mom kept saying, I think he likes you. And I said, no, he's just being nice. He's just a friend. He doesn't like me. She goes, well, any guy that's going to go to that much trouble and try to get your measurements only two weeks after meeting you likes you. And I was uh -huh. like, oh. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> and then when we went to the Bible study, he, um, nothing real romantic happened. He just kind of held my hand at the end of the Bible study. 
but it, the Bible study was on relationships. Yeah, that was well planned. Yeah, <laughs> how did I plan yeah, that, that one? Was well planned. Yeah, that was did you plan that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when I came home from that, my mom said, so was that just a friend's thing or was that a date? And I was like, um, I, I, I don't know. I think it was a date, I guess. If it looks like a date and it sounds like a date, maybe it was a date. I don't know. But I uh, I held out for a little bit longer before I would agree to date him because I had dated uh, other guys that were disabled as well. And those relationships weren't as weren't successful. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, I don't know if I want to do this again. She, well, she for four months was like, I don't know if this is going to work, if this is going to work. In June, we <laughs> traveled to Houston together because there was a concert for a group by the name of Third Day. Have Which is ever, my favorite. Ever Christian heard the about them? Um, favorite Christian artist is Third Day. I'm they, I'm so bad with with names. If I hear the song, then I know it. <laughs> yeah, well, Third Day basically was was retiring after 25 years, and this yeah, was a so farewell it was, tour. It was oh, wow. the last chance to see them. And in she concert. was so mad she missed out on getting tickets. Well. Luck of the draw was I had one of the record companies email us looking for 40 volunteers. And I was like, okay, I'm on it. And I was like, okay, we're going to Houston. I didn't tell her what it was about. And halfway there, she goes, oh, you know, the third day farewell tours in Houston today. And, that's, yeah. and I'm like, mm, mm. yeah, I know. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, that's it. What advice would you guys have for, um, for other people out there that have disabilities, um, that, you know, they want to have what you guys have. Um, and, and don't push the dating thing on yourself using websites because a lot of stuff out there, there's too many people fishing. Mm -hmm. I, I found her by accident and honestly, um, it was actually by God. I believe (laughs) that. You know, yeah. it's nothing's by hated, accident. When I was single, I hated when people would say stuff like that, like, oh, it's just gonna happen just one day when it's meant to happen and in God's timing. And and in many ways, uh Nick and I wish we had met 20 years ago because my life would have been a lot easier. And I laughed because I, I had I've been past her ago. house probably five or six times in the last two years as an Uber driver okay. and didn't know, you know. So get out. That's no, yeah. No, it's just, <laughs> yeah. And it's like, okay, this is just um, cool. Yeah, but don't I guess my advice is don't push it and let it happen naturally. Yeah. Um and and as you get older, when I was in my 20s, I was I <laughs> when I was your age, I was desperate to find somebody and want to be like everybody else, but I realized that um, you can find the wrong people if you're not careful. Yeah. And so, um, so I kind of think that my disability, in a way, protected me from finding the wrong people, because, you know, I I was a pretty 18, 20 year old, just like you are, and um, and I think a lot of a lot of guys would have come for me that maybe weren't so good had I not had the wheel, the walker or the wheelchair. Mm-hmm. So in some ways, I think it protected me. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it but, does uh, because I even see like a lot of her friends doing stuff and going out. I'm like, oh, you know, and I'm like, you know, I feel bad because she's not getting to experience yeah. some of this stuff. But then I look at some of the stuff that goes on and I'm some like, some of those guys is like, uh, but even not even just with guys, with everything, yeah. it's like, oh, it's like, in a way, I'm kind of glad because otherwise she would be out in this yeah. crazy world that it is today, you know? You know, and, and I, I went through a different way of things because I was married for 13 years. And after my first accident, my wife left me because she couldn't handle my health issues. Mm-hmm. And on, top of the, on top of the disability. I had met two people. And they were like, oh, no, nope, sorry. And I finally said, you know what? I'm going to go this other route. I'm going to try to meet somebody who might be disabled and see if they really, if it really would click. And really where it was, was she understood the garbage I go through. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, and, and, and the, the, 
we help each other we help each other put on our braces you know do our braces get ready in the morning i mean and, and i won't say that um it's uh easy it's because not easy. cooking yeah. i've had hand spasms and blown up flour in her face it was funny we turned it into a joke uh, oh you. yeah no it, it, i mean this girl can be covered in flour by the time I'm done cooking. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm really good at dropping pills. So, you know, he hands me pills because otherwise... I, I hand feed her pills them. because it doesn't end up in her mouth. It ends up on the floor. <laughs> up on the floor. You know, um, so... the And I've dated able-bodied guys as well um, as disabled guys. And there was nothing wrong with the disabled guys I've met. They were great, but they... Um, I think part of it was I didn't want to be a burden on them. Mm -hmm. the, and I, and I, um, and I don't feel that way with Nick. No. And, I, and I think it's because he's got a disability as well. We take care of each other. So I'm not saying you have to meet a disabled person to find love um, because I did find love with able-bodied guys, uh, short-term love with able-bodied guys. But there is something to be said with, meeting someone that's disabled like you just because then you don't feel like a burden you feel like you're taking care of each other mm -hmm. but she latched on to me because i had the transportation yes he had a, he had <laughs> I, had, I had a childhood friend that i was friends with forever and he was a boy but we mm -hmm. didn't date so no that's my story <laughs> oh. yeah no I, I have a wheelchair accessible van and when she found out i had that she's like okay i'm in love with you now uh-huh <laughs> uh -huh. well, wow the wheelchair van gave us so much independence you know yeah. now do you guys have people that come in and help you do you have aides that come in we do it's not let's put it this way not not, uh, not totally reliable, reliable? Mm, yeah possible. see and that's um, what i'm finding with so many people that i talk to it, yeah and the problem with texas is is texas only pays between eight and eight seventy five an hour if you hire that, an agency. That's through because we, okay. we get provider services through our insurance. Through through the Medicaid through system. Medicaid. Right. And if you hire them and the agency provides them, they only give them about eight to eight seventy five. If you hire them yourself as a self employed person and pay mm -hmm. them privately, yeah. you can pay them up to fifty. The state will pay you their contract, but you can pay them up to 1275. Yeah. That's crazy because here it's so much more. Like they get Where so much more. Even um, we're in Maryland. So okay. even with self direct, you have, I, I think it, when I was reading it, it caps out at like $29. Um, but most of them are paying around like 18. Some are paying 20. Um, but then it also cuts into your budget as well. Um, and when they go through agencies, um, they, we all just got raises. I work for the ARC, um, an ARC okay. chapter. And um, my dad worked on the board of art. Oh, get out. That's awesome. Best, best agencies. And um, yes. so I know they were able to, um, they have different programs set up so that way they can achieve more money um, and also training. And I think I want to say they can make up close to $18 now um, if they go through that DSP, the direct support program that they have. Otherwise, I think they start off at about um, 14 something or maybe even higher now because they, they've been pushing the wages up with everything. Um, yeah. but I know with one of the Medicaid ones, I think, um, one of the agencies is only still paying like $13 and that's hard because you know, really? you're, you're, you're working with real life people. Like you're right. well, taking and, them in your hands. Yeah. A lot of these caregivers can go to a nursing home and get a job paying that $20. So yep. you've got to compete with them, them. and you can't. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the, the biggest thing we have, we have a good caregiver and she is trained as a CNA, which is a bonus as a nurse. So her but respite provider is a CNA also. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's a blessing because we have her, but she's not always the most reliable. So, um, you know, she'll maybe come when she's supposed to come every day, she'll maybe come twice a week and she travels a lot and then finding Finding a second one to offset her is difficult as well. We don't yeah. have anybody right now. We've got to find somebody. It's like, yeah. really. And then with the pandemic, that puts a whole nother wrench in oh, things. Yeah. 
We yeah. did, so we did an interview yesterday with a couple um, and they both have CP, they live in Pennsylvania and she's um, uh, 2022 wheelchair ambassador of Pennsylvania. And that's her platform oh. is actually trying to, to, um, yes. to advocate for more money for these caregivers because yeah. they, they don't have caregivers because one, because the pandemic two, because of the pay. Yeah, you know, and it's so they're hard to come by, and we want they you all want to be de- independent, right? You know, so it's just yeah, and it's it's very it's a hard we're topic. Gonna help, but it's nothing wrong with that because we need the help to be right. independent. Correct. Exactly. Correct. Exactly. And like, um, my parents, because my parents always say, well, that they worry about what will happen to me, you know, if, when I lose Nick, and I. I because Nick's more mobile than I am. So Nick would probably be fine and stay in the apartment. I can be short distance apartment. with a walker and like braces. Because he, mm-hmm. he can move around a little better than I can. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, so my, my parents always pose that question. What's what's going to happen, you know, if one of you is sick or whatever? If he's ever in the hospital, I'll just go and stay in the hospital with him. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, you think about those things. And then I think, well if if I ever lose Nick I'll go go live with my sister or something mm-hmm. you know so because I know that I can't physically physically live on my own right right so and that's a she uh, she she her too and I'm so excited when we were talking about the cooking show her OT comes in once I a love week cooking. and she has I a hard time it. she has a hard time with her fine motor so yeah. I've um, cooked three times a week. She calls me crazy baker. Yes, the crazy baker. She loves to bake. <laughs> and they, they they taught like an awesome way how to crack an egg and like not get the shells all over. And um, right. but she has a hard time. So next week when she comes in, they're gonna work on just doing a simple peanut butter um, sandwich. So you know, yep. if she's hungry and doesn't want to wait for us, she can learn to do that exactly. on her own. Um, but she's right. always going to need somebody to help with cooking and, you know, and yeah. hygiene and, and getting dressed and that kind of stuff too. So when I was, when I, uh, was younger and I was a little more mobile cause I was in a walker full time when I was younger, um, I was able, I was the queen of the microwave where my mom would just leave microwave meals, hot pockets, and I would just put in a, something in the microwave. And that was my, that as much cooking as I could do, but I did do a little bit of rehabbing after um, high school and they gave me pieces of equipment. Like I have a special cutting board that has nails that go through it. And what you do is you put meat or you you put potatoes on the nails and it holds it still so that you don't have to wrestle with holding the potato. And then you take a rocking knife. I wish we had the rocking knife I could show you. And then I just use a rocking knife. Um, but it's, school. Yeah, it's the one. It's it's a, it's got a T handle on yes. it. Okay. Just, that's the, the only way so I can cut like, my food on my own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, she goes to the Maryland School for the Blind. Um, okay. And they yeah. do they do a lot of um, functional living skills, and they had a, a month long camp that they went to and she did a lot of cooking there and she loved it so when you guys get up and running she's definitely going to be watching if you ever get down towards the san antonio way you need to check out morgan's wonderland yes yes they have now opened a camp for the disabled did they really yes Yes. i did not know that i knew about morgan's but i didn't know about that Interesting. Yeah, look up Morgan's and you'll probably I haven't find the, the camp yet, but I'm excited. But honestly, because we live in Texas and it's very hot during the summer, my favorite part of Morgan's Wonderland is their water is park. A water park. park. It, is the, it is awesome. That's so, so cool. And we're hoping to get married at Morgan's Wonderland. So we'll we're working on it right now yeah. do you guys have a no. date set up or like a month or when you're june, june 4th. 4th june 4th okay mm-hmm. yeah that's awesome the trick is, is right now with social security you can't get married and well so, yes that's another we're fight a, we're calling it a blessing it's not really a marriage but it's a blessing and we both feel like we want to have it because well let's just say we bonded over christian music so we're we're very christian yeah yeah so we want to say the least we want to make sure to have a ceremony and have 
God yeah. bless it. You Absolutely. Know. And it's a shame. And again, it's another thing that gets me. It's a shame because if you marry, then you lose yeah. benefits. Like so really? It's, yeah, yeah. It's horrible. It's not really a marriage. It's a blessing. We're mm-hmm. getting a blessing. And one of our friends who happens to be an ordained um, minister, and she's also got cerebral palsy, um, is going to marry us. Wow. And, uh, her daughter, cause she, she's married. She, she's married to an able-bodied gentleman named Kevin and they're wonderful. And they have a l- little girl and their little girl, Alethea is going to be our flower girl. Aww. So, yeah. So it's going to be nice. Yeah. Now, are you aware of the SSI Restoration Act of 2021? Um, no. Okay. It is a law that is in Congress right now that will eliminate eliminate the marriage penalty yeah okay it'll yes. increase what you can get paid before they penalize your ssi right now you can get paid up to 85 dollars before they take 50 cents for every one dollar you earn they're going to increase that to 400 dollars um they're going to they're going to try to increase what we can have in our bank account at any given time right now, that number is $2,000 a month. Yeah, that's here, us here, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Do you guys have the ABLE account there? We do, yeah. I, okay. Yes, and I have it set up. I just haven't put anything in it yet because you know I just haven't yet. But, so yeah. call your congressman, get them on board. That's got to get passed. There is another bill that was just popped up this week for Social Security. I'm hoping they will piggyback the SSI Restoration Act onto that one okay and you know and i ha- i did hear about it because um we have developmental Dis- disability day coming up and they um we actually used to go every year to annapolis and and then we would march to the senate and go talk to all the legislators and um but when reasons we're gonna go ahead and do the blessing is because we already we're already together and depend on each other um 100 percent mm-hmm. physically in all in all the ways and my parents are in their 80s so my parents can no longer physically take care of me right because of the, the age so one of the reasons we're in a hurry to just do the blessing is because i want my parents it's to be there. here to see it. Mm-hmm. so um so i would love the restoration act to be approved and if if that ever happens, we'll have another little ceremony on our right. anniversary and go to the courthouse or, so get, yeah. or, or have, have, have my priest and, you know, marry us that way. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, but yeah, the reason we're doing the ceremony at Oregon's Wonderland is I want to make sure my parents can see it, can yes. be there for it. Absolutely. So, so Absolutely. So yeah. can you guys tell us a little bit about what it was like growing up with cerebral palsy and what some of your challenges were um, back then? I mean, for me, it wasn't that really that bad um, because I basically at two years old was diagnosed hemiplegic. Mm-hmm. When I was a teen, they went back and re-diagnosed me diplegic. Mm-hmm. because of my hip issue and technically i should have had three other surgeries for my cp that i never had mm-hmm. but it was just like you walked with a limp was all yeah. right but now i've got issues with my hamstring and my hip dislocating so if mm-hmm. those surgeries would have happened i wouldn't be having problems mm-hmm. uh, and you know in texas the the cp doctors are either in houston or dallas they're not in san antonio um we're finding that same thing for san antonio doctors now we're going to austin for most of our appointments yeah yeah it, it's the, really really the specialties and the the proactive doctors are in austin yeah well. they're more proactive in austin. Finding. and how long does it take you to get there about an hour and a half an hour but with traffic yeah you can never you can never really get there in an hour people say it's an two hour, and a half. But it's, yeah it's more like two and a half <laughs> yeah well we have a Medicaid program that pays our pays us for mileage. So yes. I was like, okay, let's just do it. Whenever mm-hmm. we go to, which is the blessing, whenever we go to doctor's appointments, they reimburse us for gas, which is awesome. Yeah. So, it is. 
we take advantage of that for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and, and, and my, my struggle in San Antonio is, is to get my braces made. The guys here don't want to do my leather work. I have to have leather because I am, I have a latex allergy and I can't wear plastic braces. Okay. And so everything I do is leather. It's heavier, it's older, but I don't care. <laughs> it keeps me from having an autonomic dysreflexia attack. Yeah. I have, I have autonomic dysreflexia because it was falling foot injury. Okay. So you were, you said you were in two accidents and then one yeah. accident, yeah. you end up with the spinal cord injury. Two yeah. different spinal cord injuries. Yeah. Wow. Have you ever looked into the bionis unit? I have. Yeah. It, it's, it's a, it's a device to wear it's, on your, yeah. on your leg. Oh. We, we have it. It costs a lot of money, but it does roll over. Yeah, she just got yeah. them. Yeah. And it's, and you know, I think it's sad because we, there was a, a lady that her husband had passed away. We're in a bias group and, um, but you can't even buy them secondhand. And it was brand new because you have to have a prescription. So they won't even service it. So, but yeah. like it has helped her so much. Like she's not dragging, she's picking up her legs, she's clearing it. And then she does 20 That's minutes awesome. a day um, with just in the training. And it's set up to um, for if she's um, riding a bike. Uh, yeah. So it's helped with a lot. And, and ever since her, she had a huge um, surgery, nine hour surgery, like four years ago. And with mm-hmm. that, her circulation got worse in her feet too. Plus, she ended up with a DS. Same, so this yes, is, Reese has the same issue. Yes. Yeah. My, yes. Well, you know, and, and, you know, with me, I only had one surgery. So, you know, and, but I'm, I, it, you know, it's been real hard. Mm-hmm. I had, um, my growing up, I had five surgeries. Okay. So I had more surgeries growing up. Um, so I do remember um, being in the hospital a lot and, or, or, like uh, my major surgery was when I was 11 years old and that's when they did like 13, 13 surgeries at one time that when I woke up, I had 13 incisions up and down my legs, but then mm-hmm. they said I was orthopedically correct, whatever that means. Mm-hmm, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. what, it, what it means is that I was able to stay in the walker for as long as I did. Cause I was a full-time walker user up until 2013. Okay. So did, up did, until my 30s did faith have sdr she did not she did okay. not um but she did they did they broke both of her femurs and What's tibias it's a it's a different um surgery and there's a gentleman that actually does it i'm in a few groups with it but they did her um femur both her femurs tibias um and then they did um some lengthening and they did two different procedures on her feet and she had literally like a like like steak tent stakes in, in each of her feet. I still have to wear braces. Yeah. yeah when you're not having yeah. the bias, you wear the braces. Yeah. 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 You, unfortunately, braces are a fact of life Necessary and, evil. and you have to wear them for the rest of your life. Just like one of the things that's so frustrating to us is like when we were in school, we were given therapy, no questions asked and, you know, physical therapy. We got physical no big therapy. Deal. No questions asked, part of your day at school, part of mainstream, everything. But once you age out of the system, all of a sudden you have to fight for every therapy session you get. Mm-hmm. And you're lucky to get six at a time. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, so that's probably as an adult with cerebral palsy, that's probably one of the toughest things is not getting the intensive therapy that I used to get when I was younger. younger. And, and I, I wish, I wish we could fight that yeah. more. I am a full-time rocker user, but when I'm on campus, it's like six miles long, so I have to use my wheelchair all day. Yeah, so we don't use it all day. Her campus is huge. So if she goes clear across, then she uses her wheelchair. Otherwise, she uses her walker. She's um, in the house. She usually uses canes. She needs to get back on her canes um, because she does very well with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the best advice I can give you, Faith, is stay on your feet for as long as possible. As long as you can. Because once you start depending on scooters or wheelchairs more often, the harder it is going to be to get back on your feet. Are you pushing a manual chair or using an electric chair? In my experience, manual. I have both. Yeah, we we ended up getting an electric one, um, which is going to go to school, and they're going to kind of see how she does with it. She does fairly well, um, just because she has no depth perception either. Um, but 
the thought there is we got the um a, the attachment on the back so that way she can put her walker on it and then go clear across the gym so that way they're no, not exactly. pushing the walker and the wheelchair at the same time this way yeah. she's not stuck in her wheelchair she, you know what i mean so like right. to place it right. just for that or if when she does go residential um you know she'll have that in the right. morning because my I, it is a high school but my high school has dorms yeah so they they have a residential oh, okay. program which she wanted to get into and she got into it but with pa the pandemic they're not fully at yeah. full capacity right now so it's just you know crazy. Yeah. Just yeah. yeah 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 so how what is it going huh what kind of walker does she use um she has the um a k walker Yep. Yeah, she's got the yep. cable. She actually has she has a Nimbo right now, and then she has a K Walker downstairs that has a um harness for the treadmill. A harness for the treadmill. And what's awesome is I could also do STEM on the treadmill, and I could cycle with it too. Nice. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, we're waiting yeah. on the new one to come in because she's gr you know grown. Yeah, I I actually have I actually have a, an H five K Walker I'm trying to get rid of, and I'm just I've got I'm out of space. And I was actually, after my accident, they had me on the walker. I would try to push the walker, but because I'm so top heavy in pushing, mm -hmm. I kept flipping the walker. The walker. And my, I had several therapists who were like, you can't do a, a posterior walker. It's too bulky. And I'm like, whatever. Met this girl. She had one. I hijacked her walker and started using it in therapy. <laughs> He uses my my walker better than me now. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah. No, we're looking we're looking at a, a, a walker that she can push for me. with mm -hmm. armrest. We're finding for me, I'm having a hard because I've been sedentary in in the chair for so long. I'm having a hard time um, walking, standing straight the way I used to with the K walker. So, so we're looking into a walker that has a, our things to hold my um, elbow mm -hmm. and that one, and I walk like this and hold on that it gives me a little more stability and it'll be in front. So yeah, I use that for gym class. So trust me, it, it's great, but it's a little there, weird. Yeah. A, yeah. A company, I don't remember the name of the company. It's more stable. It makes me feel yeah. like I'm not going to fall. Yeah. I'm not going to flip anything. Yeah. So I don't, <laughs> I think Faith understands what that. Yeah. You know, because yeah. I, I will flip. I'm trying to think but, of the name of that one that we have. We have a different. We have a different one that's more like a gait trainer, if you will. And now it's going to drive yeah. me nuts on what that one's called. And that one's at school. Um, yeah. Alligator. Has. Yeah, it's an al Is Alli it an alligator? It's gator, I yeah, think it. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we were always ones where we always wanted to have but one at school and one. Small. Yeah, it's huge. It is a lot. Like in our house, it. We keep it at school because it wouldn't fit in our house. Uh, right, in, right. The, in the hallways only the k walker does the gator, the gator one doesn't right. um and we always like to have one at school and one at home because otherwise we, back and forth and back and forth <laughs> so right. yes we always tend to have extras the benefit <laughs> of having, yes that's good the benefit um, of and then, a nurse is that she can do your hair <laughs> because i can't do my own hair so she does my hair every morning well that's one of the things i learned in rehabs i learned how to do ponytails he oh. learned how to do ponytails for me and he's learning how to do braids which is good dexterity yeah for his because yeah. i i'm technically quadriplegic because i flipped my chair and crushed my neck she's quadriplegic because of cp we actually have our our instagram channel is known as the quirky quads so i saw that like, i saw that uh, yeah um but yeah, growing up, I missed most of my fifth grade because of surgeries and stuff. And um, when my we moved around a few times and what, probably my least accepted time of my life was when we were living in Massachusetts um, for five years. I went to schools that just weren't as accommodating and they they kept separating me from the regular kids mm -hmm. and it made it very hard to make friends. So mm -hmm. like, and like, for example, because the school wasn't, schools in Massachusetts are old anyway. And so when it would snow, which is often in Massachusetts, when it would snow, because it wasn't safe for me to, to get to the cafeteria, I'd have to go outside and around and down a big ramp and stuff. Mm -hmm. So when it snowed, I had to eat with the, nurse instead of eat with friends yeah that's hard it, it, that was that was tough 
And then also when we lived in Massachusetts, um, they would only allow me to go on field trips if my parents could go to, or my physical therapist could go to. They wouldn't include me in, and make arrangements only if my physical therapist could go or only if my parents could go. So because they kept making those exceptions and, and those they kept separating me um, during the five years that we lived in Massachusetts. Um, I did not make many friends and I really kept myself, I was not very social um, to the point where my parents had me work with a counselor and she would try to get me to sit at tables with friends and, and try to make friends sitting at the lunch table and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So that, that was when I was, um, you know, fifth grade, the blessing was when we finally moved to Virginia, which I consider my hometown, it was like a whole new world because I wasn't separated from anything. And instead of having aides, special aides take me from class to class, they did the buddy system where, where a student my own age would volunteer to walk me to and from class and to carry my book bag for me. And so those buddies became my best friends and those buddies opened doors for me. And suddenly I had a bunch of friends and, and honestly, all you really need is a few best friends. Mm -hmm. You don't need a whole room full of friends, nope. you just need a few good ones. And so all of those people became my best friends. So that opened a whole new world and my parents were so happy and I cried tears of joy when I was invited to do field trips and there was no, and my mom was panicking because my mom was like, I can't get off of work that day. I can't get off of work. Right, right. And they're like, no need to panic, Miss McGuire. You don't have to come. We're, we've got her, we're set, you know, and I was included in the field trips. So um, living in Virginia and growing up in Virginia was a whole new world. Um, I had wonderful friends and um, I also got to, and I went to college and I graduated college and I got to do the dorm experience, which I do recommend for faith because um, I could have stayed at home mm -hmm. because I lived five minutes from home, but I wanted the, I wanted the dorm experience, the and, I'm, experience. and I'm so glad mm -hmm. that I did. And I chose, I chose a friend of mine that I met in yoga class. See, I didn't do, I, I didn't, I didn't live on campus all of the years, just um, two of my years in college. The first two years, I just kind of got my footing with college, mm -hmm. you know, and, and lived at home because we were five minutes away. But then the last two years is when I met one of my best friends in yoga class. She was my yoga partner. So then I was like, what would you think if we were roommates? Um, I went to community college for, for four years to get a degree in radio broadcasting. I was one semester short and changed my degree to computers and network engineering. And uh, he's my tech nerd. <laughs> they somehow got married together. And radio and I I worked for a Christian radio station from 2000 until 2008. In 2008, our owner was killed. And in 2010, I launched what is known as Heart Radio USA or Heart Radio Ministries International. And we started with one station. And that over a span of 10 years grew to be four stations. And it's did. internet radio. Yeah, which is internet radio. And so you'll have to send me the link and, and that way I can put it in the show notes. We're, we're not online right now because we're transitioning and making changes. Okay. And the other side of it is, is our royalties went from being where I could pay them monthly to where I have to pay everything at the beginning of the year. And they went from being... $500 a station or $600 a station to a thousand dollars a station last year. So, wow. and so I'm just trying to find sponsors to pick that up because yeah. I've also got a radio show. I was producing before 2018 when I got sick and was in the hospital for three months. Um, I was producing a radio show that highlighted the top 25 songs on the billboard charts and praise and worship each week because there's no praise and worship billboard chart. Yeah. I was building and producing my own charts. Awesome. And I literally was getting ready to go into syndication with that and sign a contract and ended up in the hospital with sepsis. Oh my gosh. 
from a UTI. Yeah. It was it was back when he had a calf. Thank uh, God he, my does, he doesn't. Have my a friend, calf. my friend, uh, her son deals with that a lot and is always getting infections. And a lot of times you don't know until yeah. it's too late. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, it's, I have it's scary. I don't have a catheter, but I can't feel when I have to go. Yeah. Well, no, you I, do. You just you go. Sometimes you do, but you know when you have. I, to go. I, I have no feeling, so I have to be careful. Yeah. And I, with my injury, I can't feel between my knees. The weird thing is, I can't feel. I can feel from my waist to the back, back, top of my knees, from the middle of my knees to the back of my toes. I can't feel anything. Lower legs, I can't feel anything. But this I can feel my toes. But his toes will wow. burn if something's wrong. If there's something wrong with my legs, my toes will burn, itch, be on fire, whatever. Uh -huh. It's crazy. So. And. So yeah, I'm just but, um, glad after. So many infections one doctor said well let's see if you can do with you know let's see how how you do with possible in and out calfing or no calf at all because they saw that he was getting so many of these infections and then the last one went into sep went septic and yeah. that was scary yeah that he, we were like we don't want to deal with this anymore and so i ended up in the hospital for three months and at that point i wasn't walking but i told them nurse i wanted to talk to a therapist and i got with a the therapist so i knew i was gonna be there a long time i said i want to be in a standing frame every day working on standing and by november i was released out to rehab she had just been admitted to rehab to start working on walking we were admitted together they had us and, in the same room and they let us share a room so we and they had us like working together ways. on skills yeah that's so, so cool. that's that's when we learned how to put on each other yeah that, and was doing rehab yeah. together. And it was kind of during this little bout of my journey with my health that i realized okay this girl's serious she was coming to see me every day in three months i saw my parents four times hmm. i saw her every day mm-hmm Mm -hmm. before I was admitted to rehab as and well. I was like okay and one of the things we did that was really cool in rehab is we put made posters of different Christian music lyrics um I sent you a piece that I wrote uh from Toby Mac's song get back up and we had posters from that song on the wall what and we, what we did was we took favorite lyrics from different Christian music and we used that to decorate our room and we literally and the nurses loved it <laughs> had 50 or 60 posters all over the wall and our room had become a witnessing tool to the nurses to the staff to other patients we'd have mm -hmm. people come down and look at it, and they're like dude this is cool and one band that we follow is named carrollton and they have a song uh called made, called for, this. made for this and we had shirts made with our lyrics from made for this on the back of it because this the the lyric is you walk this wire you take this step you never look back you never look down you're made for this it was it was a way to motivate ourselves with that song to motivate ourselves the group through we had yeah and sometimes the pts would let us play the music to help motivate us as we were doing our therapy because yeah um yeah because sometimes because it hurts to be stretched so sometimes mm -hmm. I fondly refer to my physical therapist as a physical terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> physical terrorist. I love it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. it's so uh, funny because because my one of my PT says, yeah, but you can negotiate with a terrorist. You can't negotiate with me. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. You know, you know you've been in the hospital so much or in therapy so much when the nurse walks in, hey, I remember you from from da, 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 so, da, da. So. uh-huh 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 you have a reputation Lord. yeah I've got a very bad <laughs> yes we always have um i heart caleb caleb radio on all the time when i had surgery yeah. caleb's awesome yes yeah it was so yeah. painful to get up on my um leg at first so uh -huh. they let me listen to music and that was cool mm -hmm. yeah anything nice. anything to motivate you to just keep on going because Therapy is not easy. Physical therapy is not easy. No. Mm -hmm. I and my therapist try to get back into the walker is not easy. Mm -hmm. so, 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 Nick, I know that you. Therapy. No, sorry. 
So, Nick, I know that you were saying you do, um, you did a ton of devotionals. So, yeah, uh, and you had sent me four of them and oh my gosh, they were amazing. And I'm definitely uh, going to be sending them to um, our pastor. I was actually telling our pastor, his brother about it this morning. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like, and we're interviewing this couple, you know, this afternoon, I was telling them about you. Um, yeah, I, they're amazing. I had my stroke back in 2017. I had a, a minor stroke. Um, and I started writing those devotionals. I probably wrote about 150 of them. And that was before he met me. And you can find them on the Wheels of Change 2016 Facebook page. And email uh, that to me because I want to be able to put that in the show notes. So yeah, when we're done, yeah. make sure you email that to me. I, 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 I've shied away from it, but I'm going to get back to it because we just finished our move. Um, but I was posting um, daily verses and devotionals on Wheels of Change every day up until December 31st. And I had to stop because our move took priority. I think yeah. I think he did that back then, though, just just to keep himself going and to keep, and, and to keep, keep focused. himself in the right mind and a yeah. positive mind. Yeah, because I was trying to avoid the depression because I knew after having a stroke, I had no function on my right hand, no function of my right foot. And my family was like, there's nothing wrong with you. You're just fine. And I'm just sitting there like, okay, then how is it I can't get myself up the stairs at home because we live in a two-story house? And this was before he met me. Yeah. And okay. that's when his hands started because his hands, um, he uses a special fork and knife because his hands lock up and um, sometimes there are some days that they're loose, but like right now we're having cold weather in Texas. Oh. So his hands are extra tight. So yeah. his hands are like this right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a floppy quad. I'm no. not a stiff quad. <laughs> quadriplegic. My hand, my fingers, I'll be typing just fine. And the next thing I know, my fingers are curled up. I can't type. I have pretty good dexterity, except for when it comes to pills. Oh, or, that's, or, that, or that's questionable. Or <laughs> trying, to do, trying to do tiny buttons are my nemesis, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you're so, marrying me for tiny buttons, uh, the long arms. Uh, I'm marrying him for his long arms because he can reach everything I can. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I make most therapists cringe because I can slide myself out of my wheelchair to the floor and pull myself back into my chair without having help. Well, that's actually something that your therapist taught you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've actually, actually done I kind of taught myself. Isn't that, that like a coping <laughs> thing? So, but we also have like emergency buttons for if, yeah. any, if any one of us falls. Okay, that's good. Emergency buttons to press, you know. Um, Let me see who falls professionally and likes to what likes to see the hot fire. I'm, <laughs> I'm very good. <laughs> I'm very good at when I realize I'm going to fall of just re relaxing my muscles and sliding. so I don't hurt myself. Uh -huh. so I'm, a, I'm a professional slider. <laughs> I'm very, you know, my feet go out from under me because they don't want to behave and they just want to spad. So I'm just a professional slider sometimes. And then he teases me about the firemen. They are kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know. So tell us about the, more about the cooking show. When are you planning to launch it? Um, how often are you going to be We're doing episodes? Weekly to every two weeks to do episodes. Um, I've got a little bit of a learning curve because mostly I do audio, so I don't do video production. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to have to learn either find some type of software or learn something really simple. Of how to do, how the to video. do it. Um, We're hoping his friend Dan can teach us some video tricks. Yeah, I got a friend that can teach us video tricks. I'm working, I've got a group, uh, Traumatic Brain Injury Foundation of San Antonio, it has put forth the money to get us some of, our, us some of our utensils and things. And they're also going to put forth the money for us to get our cameras. Wow. And once that happens, um, we're going to start doing video. But right now, if you go out to the Facebook page, Cooking with the Quads, and that's spelled Q-U-A-D-S, like you're quadriplegic. Because we're, we're both quadriplegic. To you. So, since, um, so, so since we don't have a video, what we do have is we have 
still pictures of what we and we'll put we put the ingredient sheets up there and whatnot and usually put it out in the form of a pdf or a word document so it can be seen yeah and 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 typically with the cooking i'm like the he's the main chef i'm the sous chef i'm the one that chops everything or gets everything ready um and he and he's the main cook (laughs) so what are some of your favorite dishes to cook um I we I love doing uh, fried rice. I have two instapots. Yeah, our fried. Okay, we my have, oven is, is like really pot. neglected <laughs> and very lonely. <laughs> it suffers depression because my <laughs> instapots get used more than my oven does. Well, and honestly, in my in my mind too, instapots are safer for us than an oven. Yeah, mm-hmm. and for because you think about it, you have to. To get in the oven, you have to bend down and lean forward, and it's a hot surface, and you're not fully balanced because you're bent down and you're leaning forward. What's to keep you from, like, I don't know, literally falling into the oven? oven, Yeah, you know, yeah, or just or just starting to fall, and you grab, and then you grab something something on hot. Oh yeah. When I was at therapy, they teach me how to fall on canes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they taught you how to to fall on canes. canes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They taught me how to fall when I was your age too, and they taught you taught me how to fall and catch myself with my hands if I fall forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, and my 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 favorite things to cook are basically um, the fried rice. I'll do Stir orange fried. chicken or sesame chicken. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a grocery store down here in Texas called H E B. And they'll sell pre-made kits for orange chicken or uh, sesame chicken. And their directions tell you to put it in the oven for 25 minutes at 400. Well, I honestly can put it, or 425. I can honestly put it in an Instapot for 10 minutes at 400 and it's ready to go. Instapot wow. cooks it faster. Because it's more intensified heat, it uh-huh. cooks it faster. And then I just pull it out and just and just uh, sauce it up with the sauce packet. It's ready to go. And I mean, rice is a breeze because all you do is throw the rice in there with a cup of water on 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 pressure cook for for ten minutes, and it's done. Mm-hmm. And then what you do is you put in your scrambled egg, your peas and carrots, a mm-hmm. cup of peas and carrots already frozen. They're still and frozen, that. and because the heat of the rice, it thaws them out. Mm. We did ribs the sauce. other day. We oh did, yeah, we did we ribs, did ribs the other day. In the pot with some orange juice. We did no, I was apple juice. Yeah, yeah. Um, we did uh, a few months ago. We did Dr Pepper ribs. Mm-hmm. I, I and I made a Dr, Dr Pepper glaze, basically taking Dr Pepper, mixing it with brown sugar, and putting it on the ribs. Mm. Yeah, so we've done ribs. You know, so uh, I'm I'm not a stranger to barbecue. Um, I've smoked barbecue before, and and that's one of my goals. If I ever, if we could ever get our own place, is I'm buying myself a smoker. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I can I can I can do it pretty good. Mm-hmm. And um, our our thing is at Christmas we hammer cookies. We do yeah. like four dozen cookies. Wow. Like cookies. three or four types of cookies. Now that's my favorite. My favorite is baking. Mm-hmm. I'm a yeah. baker. He, he likes the cooking. I think the thing that stresses me out about cooking is the whole time management thing. Mm-hmm. Cooking something. Whereas baking, it, baking is more precise. Yes. <laughs> the measurement in and that measurement in. You pop it in the oven for a certain amount of time that comes out. Great. <laughs> you know, and and so. what, I, what I've read and learned is, okay, there's all-purpose flour, but don't let people tell you there's only one type of flour because there are like there's five, there's five types of flour and it is different and it cooks different. And I, so I now have five types of flour. But we've also, we've done cookies in the Instapot. Oh, we've yeah. done, uh, we've done a, a nine inch cookie with M&M's in the Instapot. 
Yeah. I think I'm gonna have to get me an Instapot. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, when you look at it, uh, we did Dr. Pepper brownies in the Instapot. Yeah. yeah, we did Dr. Pepper brownies in the Instapot. So yes, you can bake with an Instapot as well. Yeah. We love our Instapot. So and basically, cool. basically, we uh, we took a cookie, just a, a, a ball of cookie dough um, from, what's her name? Oh, Natasha, Natasha in the kitchen. Natasha in the kitchen. On took YouTube, her cookie dough Natasha recipe. Natasha in the kitchen, we grabbed her cookie dough recipe. And took that cookie dough recipe, added peanut M&Ms to it, put it in a pan in the Instapot, put it on 10 minutes, pull that pan out. You flip it over, so you turn your cookie over, so it cooks the other side for another 10 minutes, and it comes out phenomenal. Yeah. So we did a giant cookie, but you could also do individual cookies, too. Yes. In the Instapot. But, we, but in this case, we just did one giant cookie to see if it would turn out, and it turned out well. And that's when we knew we could do the brownies. <laughs> We're yeah. like, okay, we can do the giant cookie, then we could do, we can do the brownies. <laughs> you know, and then, then you take the therapy and bribe the therapist, and then they're asking, okay, how do I order myself one? <laughs> we, we, yeah, every time, anytime we, we go into rehab for some like heavy duty therapy, um, it, we bring our Instapot with us so that we can cook some too. Do, uh, do a cooking uh, so. demonstration. And they're like, y'all are really ahead of the game. We're like, yeah, we, uh, <laughs> we may be a little more, more When it advanced. comes to cooking, we're ahead of the game. When it comes <laughs> to like doing our stretches or, or some of our standing or any of that, we may be behind. Although they have shown us how we can stretch each other. Oh, that's know? cool. So, yeah. Yeah, but we're not necessarily good at keeping up with it because stretching is mm. not. Yeah, there. yeah. So, yeah. um, no, I, I'm actually my my legs have gotten so tight over the pandemic. I'm probably gonna have to have my ankles casted because the the physical therapist has told me he can't do anything else for me. Mm. And I I had it done. So we're just stuck. normally they do it in children. Yeah, but I I had it done when I was 36, and I was casting for 16 weeks, and I went from like a negative five to a positive nine. Did they do uh, Botox too, and then cast you, or just cast you? Yes, they did, and I will not. The Botox is oh, it was horridly painful. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna have to have Botox done when I get casted. Yeah, Yeah. and I'm and I'm considering Botox for at least my quads. Because mm-hmm. it's my quads that, that burn that keep me from standing more. And yeah. so maybe doing Botox or uh, I'm going to look into the back of fin pump, but I'm scared of the back of fin pump mm-hmm. because it's ongoing at surgery. And once it's done, I have to live with it forever, mm-hmm. um, you know, and maintain it forever. But if it gives me mobility again, maybe it'll be worth it. Worth yeah. it. Yeah. So because I, I do miss being in the walker full time yeah and having that ability yeah yeah the walker we're looking at for her the new one is called a u-step oh, and yeah, you, what you, what, what's unique about it is when you push it you have to hold the handles to push it otherwise when you release the handles it breaks it really breaks yeah it's a reverse braking system interesting i, I like that better because i think you know i because uh, my hands will react to it better i yeah. think i haven't fully tried it yeah. yet yeah We've just looked at it online we're, but our, our difficulty with it is is right now we're trying to get our power chairs approved so we're waiting on the walker mm-hmm. and after we get them approved we're debating whether we get it or not um because i mean the walker yeah the walker well one thing i'm excited about with the, the electric chairs that we're trying to get approved is I've been told by my doctors that maybe I would build up my quads if I use a stander. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, is if we get these electric chairs approved, it's a stander as well. So oh, we that, yeah. 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 yeah, I know, I know. I've not been able to do much standing without my braces. And even with my braces, my standing right now is so painful. Getting the standing frame is imperative. Mm-hmm to keep me functional yeah well let's let's just put it this way 
most of his falls, if he falls, it happens when he's not wearing his braces. Mm-hmm. When he's wearing his braces, Being he's more, he's just pulling myself up steady. from my chair to a bed or whatever. Right. You should try and look into the binuses because if you have a spinal cord injury, Medicaid pays for that because when we tried, Medicaid wouldn't even look at it because of the fact that she didn't have a spinal cord injury. That's just dumb. Yes. Now, I hate how insurance companies think that they're doctors. Is, Is Maryland an expanded Medicaid state? I have no idea. Texas is not. And that's our problem is Texas. Medicaid is not expanded Medicaid. Most democratic states are. That's why I say that. And it, expanded Medicaid states have so many more dollars than a non-expanded Medicaid state does. Okay. Yeah. And see, and she just got Medicaid um, through the way she actually got it through um, the family support waiver. And now she's right. 18, she would have gotten it anyway, but she was costing um, prior. They called the MCO was priority partners. It was costing them too much money. So they went ahead and put an application in for REM, which is the rare and um, expensive management. And she got approved mm-hmm. for that. So you would think even with that, that they would have, uh, you know, look at it, but, but yeah, yeah. we have a, um, a lady that we, we, uh, our coordinator, we meet with her once a month and kind of talk about, you know, what her needs are and that kind of stuff. Yeah. She's really good. Good. I'm glad you guys have a coordinator for all of that. Yeah, yeah, we have so many coordinators. I literally have to like, they love me because I'm, I, if I don't have it like written down, I will forget. So I have just run, mm-hmm. this running list and then I, I go like 16 doctors. Yeah. And then I go back and I, oh, after, our world. after we, we meet, I update, you know, what the update is. And then like once a month I send it to them and I have them all on the thread. Cause she's got four or five different coordinators. They all need to know. So I'm like, yeah. there you go. One's DDA, one's Medicaid. One yeah. is through the arc. Oh, yeah. you know how it goes. Um, but yeah, it gets, it gets overwhelming. You know, I yeah. actually have metal it's on my lot. legs. Yes, you have yeah. metal in your legs. Do you yeah. have metal? Did they leave your plates or anything in when you had your surgery? Yeah. Or did you- um, they did for a year and then they took them out. They left yeah. her tibias, but they took her femurs out. So, gotcha. and my mom kept them, which is odd, but uh, but yeah, she kept them. Really? Yeah. That's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> Every, every once in a while, I'll be looking through a... a bucket full of pictures and memories and I'll come across them and I'll be like you still have these mom like I don't know that's so funny well before we wrap up I had emailed you guys um about to think about what what word resonated with you a meaningful word because words are so powerful these days and I like to gift all of my um my guests with a word and I hand stamp and ink them on tokens and I put them into bracelets and anklets and keychains and necklaces. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to know if you guys would be willing to share what that word is and why. Mm. Well, I think mine is, is pain because even though we go through so much pain, it stands for perseverance, acceptance, inspiration, and never ending faith. I love that. Yeah. Wow. And um, I wrote that as I was going through my second spinal cord injury because I was sitting there and I was like, dude, I have just in the last year gotten myself to where I'm walking a little bit. And now I've had a second accident and now I'm back down to where I'm not walking at all again. And, and it he- was like, really and he was handling all this by himself because it's before he met me before i met her so and my he, parents really he was using his christian music and and stuff like that and his writing to help him through it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and i i had written that and put that on the wall in, in in my room and even the psychologist looked at looked at me and was like dude you don't need a psychologist you understand how to handle uh, this you don't have issues with depression and I'm like no I don't um, I, I I do things and I have to keep a positive attitude mm-hmm. after my second mm-hmm. accident I was sitting in the hospital room recording my radio show every week still 
microphone, laptop, and I record my show. And the therapists were like, how are you doing that? Doing I'm that. Like, pretty, pretty much doing voiceover and just recording voiceover, text, and typing, and uh, producing, writing my charts. You know, it was crazy. And but all that was keeping them going. Going, yeah. yeah. And mind you, I had just started producing and writing the show two weeks before my accident. Mm -hmm. And it was like, boom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I was in rehab from basically June 27th through September 9th. And by the time I got out of rehab, I had to fight for an extra two weeks. By the time I had gotten out of rehab, I was able to be on crutches and walking with my leg braces. But I could still, I had no feeling in my legs at all. When I had my accident, the way they hit my neck, I had no feeling in my arms or my hands for about three weeks. It was brutal. I couldn't even imagine. You know, and the night of the accident, when I went to the yard, the doctor was like, you're just fine. You can go home. And I'm sitting there like, dude, really? And he comes back an hour and a half later. He's like, why haven't you left? I told you you could walk out of here. And I'm like, turn around and look behind you. And he looks behind me and he goes, oh, beep. He says something else. And uh, he realized I'm in a wheelchair. And he's like, uh, you can't push your chair, can you? And I'm like, no, sir, I cannot. He's like, what do you want me to do? I can still send you home and someone can push you out of here. I'm like, no, sir. You're going to admit me to the hospital. You're going to admit me so I can get admitted to the rehab and transferred to rehab so I can heal. He's like, yeah. well, outpatient yeah, will be just fine. For your right. Yeah, like, exactly. Medically. For and I'm looking at him like, you're crazy because outpatient will not do justice for what I need to have done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Um, I think my word would be my parents have always taught me about having a positive attitude no matter what life throws you so I think my my word would be attitude and um they've taught me to see to be empathetic um and to and the right people will be empathetic to you and you be empathetic to them mm -hmm. and the people that are empathetic to you um are the ones that become your friends, your community, you know, um, but, but mostly having a positive attitude, no matter, you know, smart, smart. We have, um, there's one kid that I tutored when I was in college, his, um, and he is low IQ, born with a low IQ. So he's got special needs, but he's, he's a, a great kid awesome runner he can run like nobody's business and he's the only smiling runner i've ever met <laughs> is there anybody else in this world that smiles when they're running but um my buddy joe he's a smiler so i'm um, so every once in a while I, you know um went back when i was tutoring him i would watch him run and i'd be like i want to live life running and smiling smiling so i guess attitude just you know even when you're doing something tough like running smile and and try to have a positive attitude and do whatever you need to do to get in that positive attitude whether it's listen to music mm -hmm. you know um, or write something down <laughs> um mm -hmm. you know write poetry or paint a picture my friend heather that's gonna marry us she likes to paint so she paints you oh, know my. um so, you know, find that outlet, whether it's art you know, mm -hmm. or um, anything that's going to make, make you have a positive attitude. attitude. I actually have mm -hmm. social anxiety and I see a psychologist, but I have a pretty good yep. attitude. So. Mm -hmm. yep. You see a social, a social yes, worker. You have a good attitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes well, I'm, I'm too social. <laughs> <laughs> I Honestly, Faith, I think when I was your age, I had a little bit of that too. The only thing that brought it out of me is, um, or made things better was finding good people. Mm -hmm. So just keep finding good people. Yeah. Mm, finding good people that cook. 
<laughs> I'm actually gonna go on my first plane ride. Um, so I'm a little nervous. Do you have oh, any advice for that? Uh, first plane ride. Okay. Um, I would definitely listen to music or read something that you like. Do something that you like to distract you. Distractions are good when when you're nervous or scared. Mm-hmm. Well, we're looking we're looking so. this summer maybe to take Amtrak out to California. Oh, that'd be cool. Because I don't mind flying only because I lived life in a car because my parents and I would drive everywhere because my mom hated flying. Mm-hmm. So now I look at flying as a luxury because you get there so much faster. Faster. Mm-hmm. I, just, I just don't fly because taking my chair, I don't trust the airline. And with Amtrak, you roll right on. You don't have any problems with your chair. You're good to go. See, and I like flying because you get there faster. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, just do whatever you need to, Faith, to distract yourself. Yeah. You know, yeah. surround yourself with something that you like, whether it's, you know, um, growing up, my distraction was New Kids on the Block. I was a big New Kids on the Block fan. So, mm. like, even when I was in my surgery, I had my Joe McIntyre doll with me taking <laughs> into my surgery when I was 10 years old. Okay? <laughs> Actually, so, I think that's a show still. What? New, New Kids, Kids on the, on the Block? block. They're, they don't have a New show. Kids on the block have a, they have a... Um, it was I forget what channel it's on. Um, they they have a reality show about their cruise. Oh, I didn't cruise. even know that. And it's um, what is it? Get off the boat or or get on the boat is what it's yeah. called or something. That's so. Something. And and Donnie Wahlberg has a couple um, couple of reality shows with his wife Jenny McCarthy. So that might be the two that. that she's referring to. But, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, more than I do, so, girl. So well, just find whatever distracts you on the plane. Yeah. That's what I would do. Well, I want to thank you guys um, for taking the time out and talking to us and being on the show. We look yeah. forward to watching your cooking show. Um, and I'll put all your information in the show notes so people know how to find you. And with that, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us as we spread awareness through our personal stories and the many resources shared. You can help us by joining our village simply by sharing our show to the masses. If you would like to support the Gilbo Girls on another level, click on the link in the show notes to make a donation in any amount. Add your address and you'll receive a hand-stamped token with the word village on it in appreciation. Be sure to subscribe to our Gilbo Girls podcast and YouTube show. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Gilbo Girls. Till next time. And I told her Heard that the dorm room that my college had was awesome because it was an enjoyable.